Good evening and welcome to Kini News. I'm your host, Camelia, bringing you today's top story. Najib may have been convicted of misappropriating millions of ringgit, but he appears to be enjoying life more than most Malaysians who aren't even convicted of any crime. And for Ambiga, his invitation to the palace left a bad taste in her mouth. Former Malaysian Bar President Ambiga Srinivasan has expressed regret that the monarch Sultan Abdullah Sultan Ahmad Shah had invited Najib Abdul Razak to the palace during recent events. Najib was convicted of misappropriating 42 million ringgit of SRC international funds, described as a national embarrassment, and is also embroiled in another trial related to one of the biggest financial scandals in the world. Under these circumstances, Ambiga Srinivasan said it was regrettable that Najib was in their guest list. During an interview with Malaysia Kini, she contended that these episodes were disrespectful to the courts. She said was made to understand that at another gathering, judges were apparently present, thus putting them in an embarrassing position. Conceding that Najib could be successful in overturning his conviction when the federal court hears his appeal, she, however, said that until that happens, the court and the process must be respected. Pressure continues to mount against Tajuddin's appointment as Malaysia's new ambassador to Indonesia, especially given the UMNO leader's track record. Persatuan Petra Kebangsaan is the latest to voice out against the appointment of Pasi Salak MP Tajuddin Abdul Rahman as Malaysia's ambassador to Indonesia. In a statement today, Petra President Mohamed Arshad Raji demanded that Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob and his cabinet rethink and quickly revoke the appointment. He said the avalanche of public opinion against this move by the Prime Minister and his cabinet cannot be ignored. Arsha said that Patriot members have been receiving a constant stream of messages registering the public's disapproval and an initiative on Change.org petitioning to revoke the appointment of Tajuddin was also getting a lot of signatures. He added that it was not too difficult to understand the public outrage and why there is an overwhelming protest over the appointment. According to Arsha, the long list of controversies surrounding Tajuddin disqualifies him from being selected and appointed to play an ambassadorial role. He said even though the Prime Minister has assured that Indonesia has welcomed the appointment, patriotic citizens of Malaysia think otherwise. Tony Poir has been called arrogant and not business friendly, but what did he do to deserve such labels? He revealed it during a speech in Petaling Jaya last night. Ex-Premier Mahathir Mohamad had described Damansara MP Tony Pua as arrogant and not business-friendly when Pakatan Harapan was in power. I think all of you would have read not too long ago what Tun Dr. Mahathir wrote about me in his book. If you haven't read the book, you would have read the excerpts that were published uh, in some of the news portals out there. Talking about this in his speech during a fundraising dinner in Petaleng Jaya last night, Poa questioned if rejecting proposals or avoiding direct negotiations with those former BN cronies were considered as not business friendly. I'm not business friendly because when crony bosses, I can tell you, a lot of the Tan Sri, Tan Sri, Dato Sri, Dato Sri, uh, with no offense intended for the Dato Sri's who are here. <laughs> <laughs> the big crony contractors, they come to MOF very regularly. And very often, they will pull out, put out feelers to see whether they can get an appointment to have lunch or dinner with Tony Poa. Poa pointed out that one of his proudest achievements in MOF was eliminating direct negotiations. That was not the modus operandi that I am agreeable to because my loyalty are to the people of Malaysia and not to the cronies of Barisan National. During the same event, Poa said the country has stupid ministers because smart people tend to avoid joining politics. He then urged more young professional Malaysians to join politics. I want to tell you here, why we have stupid ministers. And I'm going to concede 
that there are stupid ministers in BN, there are also stupid ministers in Pakatan Harapan. Just that BN one stupider lah. But there are stupid ministers everywhere. Why? The reason why we have stupid ministers is because the smart people in the country do not join politics. One MDB's former chairperson did not confront Najib over certain suspicions at the time because Najib was the prime minister and he now regrets it. The former 1MDB chairperson Muhammad Baki Saleh conceded that he should have confronted Najib Abdul Razak. This was over suspicion on whether the Prime Minister was involved in the irregular transactions within the Sovereign Wealth Fund. Baki, the 15th prosecution witness, testified during the 2.28 billion ringgit 1MDB corruption trial against Najib before the Kuala Lumpur High Court today. He said he was uncomfortable levelling with Najib in 2009 over his suspicion of Najib's role in what transpired at 1MDB. During the re-examination by Deputy Public Prosecutor Gopal Sri Ram, the witness claimed that he was restrained and discouraged from making the complaint directly with Najib as the latter was then sitting Prime Minister. Previously, Baki told the court that he harbored suspicion about Najib being involved in the irregular transactions. He stepped down as 1MDB chairperson in October 2009. Baki said looking back, he should have done that, PM or not. He added that he should have stuck out his neck. Additionally, Baki told the court that following his resignation, he met Najib several times after that, but Najib never asked his reasons for stepping down. Hearing before Judge Colin Lawrence Sakwira is set to resume on June 7th. Mahathir may have an issue with Najib's cash is king phrase, but according to an UMNO leader, Mahathir used to have his own. UMNO Secretary General Ahmad Maslan has given three reasons why Pujuang leader Dr. Mahathir Muhammad is becoming less relevant. One reason, he said, was Mahathir's snide remarks aimed at former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak for uttering, Cash is king, king is rakyat, during a televised debate recently. Ahmad said Mahathir should remember that during his era, Kroni is king and not the rakyat. He said Mahathir's economic ideology was to enrich a small group of Kronis with the assumption that others will benefit. However, Ahmad said a small group of Kronis got rich and the normal folks especially the Malays and Bumiputra, are not as successful until this day. The second reason was that Mahathir did not appreciate Najib era policies and subsidies, which benefited Malays and Bumiputra. Ahmad's third reason for Mahathir being less relevant was that the latter could no longer manage Malaysian political dynamics. He argued that Mahathir had failed to control Muhyiddin Yassin and DAP during the Pakatan Harapan administration. The data of millions of Malaysians is allegedly being sold online and Bukit Aman has launched a probe into the matter. Bukit Aman Commercial Crime Department has launched an investigation into an offer made online to sell data from Putrajaya's My Identity database. In a statement, CCID Director Kamarudin Muhammadin confirmed that police have received a report on the matter. He also assured the public that they will do the necessary to address the issue. According to the police, the data was allegedly taken from the National Registration Department. Kamarudin also urged the public to not speculate on the issue. Yesterday, it was reported that millions of records from Putrajaya's My Identity database have allegedly been sold online. The seller, known only as Actifedot, placed an advertisement for data on a hacker forum known as Breach.co on April 29th. This is the second time in which personal data of My Identity users has been sold since late last year. Noor Efandi will be continuing his political career with Amana after being sacked by Bersatu last year. Former Telokmas State Assembly person Noor Efandi Ahmad has joined Amanah. 
Noor Effendi was sacked by Bersatu during the Malacca political crisis last October after he rebelled against Sulaiman Muhammad Ali's government. In a post on Facebook yesterday, Malacca Amanah Chairperson Adli Zahari said he welcomes Effendi to the Amanah family. Noor Effendi was one of the four assembly persons who were responsible for bringing down Sulaiman's Amno Bersatu state government. He had retracted his support for the Malacca government in favor of Pakatan Harapan, which had led to the dissolution of the state assembly and a fresh poll. Nor Effandi was the only one to sit out of the Malacca polls. BN won with a two-thirds majority in the Malacca state election on November 20, 2021, capturing 21 of the 28 seats. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to MalaysiaKini.com. I'm Camilia. Thanks for watching.